Check, check, check. Microphone check, fire crackle check. Just going to grab the chat box. We'll be getting started in just a minute, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Mandelbolt Monday. Once again, we're on episode six now. you see aside from the wonderful fireplace is the piece one of the pieces we made last week this is piece number two from last week Let's hop on over to Mandelbulb, and here we are. How you doing, everyone? Welcome to Mandelbulb Monday. Here you see our classic Mandelbulb, or the Kidney Stone, as it is referred to by Sess. And you know what? Let's do some shout-outs, y'all. Got to open this up on my phone, make sure we got... Audio is actually working because whenever I don't check, it doesn't work for some reason. And we're working. We're going. So maybe we'll just hang out for a minute because no one is watching right now and I would like to have at least one person watching when I start. So we're just going to actually go over to the hot box for a second. By the way, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm archiving all of these shows on YouTube for posterity. And I've got a couple different series now. We've got Mandelbald Monday. we got Tendril Tests, where I review and do sound design with the various um, VSTs and whatnot and hardware sometimes. we got Procreate Wednesday. And we have sort of Production Thursdays. That's not really like a series at this point, but I th I'm thinking of a way to make that into a series right now. So cheers, everyone. And hey, we have one viewer. Let's get started then. Because the... What we're trying to do here is we're going to do a two-hour show every week, but we're trying to do one piece per hour, which I think is a reasonable goal. So we'll hop back over there. And here we are in Mandelbulb, classic Mandelbulb. And I think we're going to start with the mutagens again, because I really liked where, where that brought us last week. 
So we go to Mutagen. And we're just going to play around with some of these probability and formulas. Maybe we'll turn the strength up on this one. We'll get some crazy stuff this week. Let's mutate. We'll see what we get. See if anything kind of strikes or fancy. Let's see right away. There's so much cool shit in here. Like this one looks like a uh, a uterus, Elvis kind of deal. With you got the fallopian tubes right there. Let's mutate again. And oh yeah, another thing. Um, you can actually go back. So if you mutate again, you actually have all the different generations of the mutation down here. And you can scroll backward if you want. Oh, did it freeze? I think it might have froze. Let's try one more time. So now we have some other stuff here. Wow, yeah, this is kind of cool. And yeah, even like, look at something like this. Let's send this one. This is like a really minimalist kind of. We'll send that to the main editor. We'll calculate it. This looks like church architecture. Let's go into the navigator, and maybe we'll fly around this a little bit and see where it brings us. And here we are again in the situation where we're kind of stuck inside the fractal. Taking this right away, too. It does kind of look like weird, um, like almost gothic church architecture, but also it has like a very tree root kind of thing going on. That's really cool. This. this almost gives me the impression that we're sitting on a tree limb, and then we're looking like a, like in a really high tree limb. That's kind of looking out over a space back here. Let's see if we can mess with the far plane. field of view a little bit. Okay, yeah, the, that brings it more into the background. Let's go with this. Looks like we'll look a little bit more this way. Let's go looking distance or angle. Let's do smaller increments so we can look not quite as much. Yeah, there we go. We'll kind of just get a better composition going here. Let's 
go with that. We'll send that to the main, view to main. We'll calculate it out, and then we're going to start saving. And then we'll get into it. Let's get that coffee check. So we're going to start saving this inside of the animations. So we're going to go here. Animation keyframe back in the navigator. And now let's go back to animations. There's our keyframe. And we're going to start saving these. And so this is my new sort of naming convention where I have the episode number. And the... Okay, so there we are. Got that keyframe saved. And I, you know what? I might even play around with a little more of the mutations. Because maybe there's a similar one in here that will kind of be better for this purpose. We started with that one, right? We got to here. Let's mutate this one. Let's see what we get. Again, this mutation history is great, so you can go back to all the different iterations. Uh, something like this, maybe. Or even this. This has like a really weird sort of geometry to it. Actually, like a lot of these. Let's try... Let's try this one. Dude, it's super cool. So let's bring that into the navigator. And grab the parameter, the formula, and the light. And let's do our first posture check, because I'm already, like, hunched over. Let's see if I can just move a little bit closer, Miel. See where we can take this one. Hey, okay, so deep inside the fractal now. It's also interesting to note that when you do a new mutation, everything stays the same other than the the parameters in the formulas. All this stuff will stay the same, like the far plane that we said before, the field of view, all that stuff. And the position will remain the same until you start looking around and sliding and all that. Color stays the same as well. different results by changing the field of view here. Like, this is fucking so cool. I don't want to see if, by adjusting the far plane... Actually, let's, let's do a save on this one. Just saving this one, we'll just overwrite. So I want to see if I can adjust the far plane to sort of remove that big thing in the background there. 
And it kind of, yeah, it kind of does, but it might be tricky to get it to be. Oh, actually, let's see. This is cool, so you can kind of bring in the background stuff. So right now we're at, uh, if we go to four, yeah. There's always a lot of these parameters. There's like a sweet spot where one decimal point will make the difference. What if we go to 3.9? You just get a little bit of that thing in the background. But as soon as you go to like 4 point... Oops. 4 point something, you start to get a lot of it. Yeah. kind of adjust the composition here a little bit. Okay, so... Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is great. Let's even... Let's animation keyframe that. Just adjust my mic here a little bit, too. Okay, we'll save again. to the navigator, and we're going to send this to the main. Actually, let's see if we can just adjust it a tiny bit here. Get the composition looking a little better. As a basic composition, I think this really works. Has a good foreground element here, and then this sort of main focus here on the third, and then this nice open background that we can fill with a moon and we'll do the fog sort of stuff. That could be really fun. Okay, so let's send that to the main. Calculate 3D. Hey, Retro, how you doing? Welcome to the show, my friend. We're fucking making mandel bulbs and shiznit. Something. This is fun. So I might even render it out uh, slightly bigger. But you know what? Let's not do that yet. Let's let's work on the color. So we got our composition down. We got this weird alien sort of landscape shape deal, where it almost looks like it grew and it, but it was also built, but also sort of carved out by erosion. Like it's this big rocky structure that has all this weird erosion in it, like these holes. You kind of think about how that might even happen in nature. That's really interesting. So let's go over to our lighting. Maybe we'll start out with the depth. And now we got to kind of decide what sort of color space this thing's going to live in. I'm kind of feeling like a bluish purple kind of deal today. Hey. And doing this, we can kind of give a lot of depth to the field of view, but maybe we want to make this a little darker. And you know what? For this, we'll probably leave the depth kind of far away to... to bring this more into the foreground. And that way you get this nice sort of silhouette of this rocky structure on the background. Dude, I got a, I got a hole in my sock and my toe keeps popping out of it. It's really driving me nuts. Okay. And let's do a little bit of this ambient light. Uh, hold on. We get this where we need to. I'll go like that. That does push this silhouette a little bit further into the background, but not too much. It's still nicely defined. And we'll do ambient light here. Maybe this will be more a little bit more towards the green. That's kind of nice. 
and we can kind of leave this other. I think this, what they did here with this default color is really good for the ambient. This sort of like brownish beige because it, it's good for rocky structures. And that's a nice default place to be when you're thinking about metal bulbs. Okay, so we got that. Now, let's, um... Let's start saving these as M3Is. got our ambient light, we got our um, ambient and depth, so let's do some fog, and we'll shape this with fog, and then we'll get into doing the, the positional stuff. And we're definitely spending a little bit more time on lighting this time, because we already found our composition, so that's good. Got some really good stuff out of the mutagen today. So, dynamic fog. case we're kind of using the, the far offset to adjust the overall brightness in a way of the piece. So now even though my initial thought initial initial thought was to have this silhouette kind of be closer, now I'm thinking maybe by using the far fog offset, we might want to push it a little bit further back. even do our first viewing from sort of far away and see how we're doing. Yeah, it looks good. I like this overall composition. We do need to do some stuff in the sky here to balance it. So this one might, might, might be a little bit tricky because there's this big open space here and the only thing we really have to fill that space would be the um, positional lights and leaving them as visible. Let's do a hydration check and we're just going to look at this for a minute. adjust this a little bit. Now I'm thinking, let's go back into the navigator, but let's actually save again first because we did a little bit more coloring there. No reason not to save. You know what? We'll just overwrite because we don't need to go back to that original version. At a certain point, we'll start making individual saves, but this one we're just going to overwrite. And let's go back into the navigator grab all the stuff that we got there, and let's see if we can adjust this um, to the far plane. Yeah. Maybe we'll just bring a little bit more of this into this space so it's not quite as hard of an edge there. And that'll make our job easier in a little bit, because we're going to start doing these sort of implied lines. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to go and save another keyframe, just make sure we're not going to overwrite. Back in the navigator, animation keyframe. 
And then let's go into the animation. There's what we got. And now let's save again. Okay, back in the navigator, we're going to send it to the main. And calculate. So by altering the, the field of view, we're just altering the how much of the depth you're going to see. So like the closer you bring it, the more it'll cut off closer to the camera. So this is nice. Now we got this, just this little protrusion right here will help us balance this whole thing later when we go to do more stuff here with positional light. And it also kind of changed this area back here a little bit, which is cool. Yeah, I'm really digging this sort of like stretched out Swiss cheese kind of deal. Okay, so let's go back to our lighting tab. And maybe we'll mess with the... the spec light. Specular light. And maybe let's try some of these random colors. Let's see where, where that takes us. That's kind of nice. That gives it a... So I like how this green highlighting is balancing itself out. decide if we want this to be like really bold like do we want it to be really saturated and and bright like i'm really like check this out this whole thing right here this looks like a, a sort of a beak and there's even in here there's this ah uh, it's not it's not big enough yet but we can um can render it out and zoom in but yeah this like there's this sort of dinosaur bird beak here, but also there's a bigger thing going on where there's like an eye here and an eye here, and this whole thing is like a bird skull, and there's the inside of its mouth, this black space here. Maybe this one does want to be really bold like this, like it's really dark back here, but really bright up in the front. I don't like that, let's go with that. This will be like our branching off point. So we're going to save M3i and this will be 1.2. Let's get that hydration check. Hey, M. You see an underwater shipwreck, like when the subs go look at the Titanic. Oh, yeah. I feel that. Very like this like alien coral wrapped around a sunken alien Titanic. And how are you doing today, Em? Are you, are you doing uh, the old work and lurk? Let's do a stretch. Do some deep breaths. Seven point zero earthquake in Antarctica this week. Ooh, sci-fi theme, yeah. I bet the flat Earth people are up in arms about this earthquake, saying that it's a there's a Nazi base there. Or some shit. What do y'all think about Flat Earth? Do you find it as hilarious as I do? Okay, so... We saved, we did some water. Let's look at this lighting some more. I know what I just realized. We were doing the diffuse light, not the specular light. Wait a second. Oh, I guess these are somehow linked. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Maybe we'll go in that direction of the underwater kind of 
rec, and we'll adjust the brightness down a little bit. And yeah, keeping that in mind, we're going to kind of do some off-camera lights that are that give the indication that there's a, a light from above shining down like it's there's a, a rescue team on the way. Yeah, work and lurk times 100. Everything is fine. <laughs> Dang frozen Nazis. Yes, hilarious if it wasn't so insidious. Is it insidious? I mean, it, I think it's funny that people will believe it. And there goes my, my toe again. I need a new pair of socks, y'all. I'm losing my toe through a toe hole in my sock. Yes, stretch. What am I need to do? I need to like drop my chair down just a hair. Like that. Maybe that, that way I can like totally get my the adjustment correct. Okay, so let's do some object lighting. Or uh, excuse me, positional lighting on the other tabs here. So right now let's just A B this. The, for our first lighting tab, the default we have this. Turning it off does that. That kind of even it really does so much. Let's actually change the color of this one. Usually I'll leave this as default, but since this is underwater now, it's gonna have a sort of more bluish vibe to it, I think. More towards the cool. Um, so, and let's play around with the X and Y angle. It's kind of amazing how much lighting, or perceived lighting, really affects the overall composition of a piece and the overall vibe of it. Like, where the actual light source is coming from. So let's stick with that, and then we'll do some adjustments by using these other lights. And we'll just kind of... It always feels weird having lights be like a dark color like that, but it kind of works in Mandelbulb. Do we need to do a darning sock stream? I mean, sure, I don't think like... This sock? This is not a sock I would fix. Like when I get, I don't know, how does everyone feel about that? When you get, if like, if, I understand if you have a good pair of socks and they get a hole, you might want to fix it. But like, if it's just regular old like gym socks or whatever, they just get thrown out. I just throw them out. I'm actually going to remove this one sock because it's it's that crazy, actually. You know what? Then I'm on off balance, so it's got to be both socks. Okay, and let's do a coffee check. This really does have a like a character to it. It's like a yawning underwater shipwreck alien bird. And you know what? Let's do a visit to the hot box. We're doing really well on this piece. We got another half hour and we're kind of already into the a lot of the lighting. That's okay, we're just kind of taking it easy today. Toss or donate typically, but I try to fix them if I donate. <laughs> socks to Goodwill. I guess they have a place where they go and bring everything and wash it, right? And then they probably look at stuff and if it has got big holes in it, they throw it out. It's a pretty piece I like with the depth. Aw, oh, thanks, Em. Cheers, everyone.
I don't have a hotkey yet for Mandel Bulb. I need to do that. So here we are back in Mandel Bulb at our shipwreck alien thing. Oh, I lost the chat box now. Show pop out. Yes, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, but screw Goodwill. Hey, Sass, what's going on, dude? Yeah, M, do you know... What's the story with Goodwill? Are they, like, evil or something? What's going on with that? Or Salvation Army? Is there some sort of sinister under underplot? <laughs> subversive shit going on with them? The Squish TV. Okay, so let us go to... Let's turn this other light on. And we're going to put it on positional. And let's make it visible so we can see it for a minute. And we're going to place it. I mean, now we got to kind of decide where we want to have visible lights, if any. So I'm thinking one's going to be over here. So maybe let's start with that one and get that part of the composition going. So maybe that's too intense. Hiding in plain sight is the technique. Let's see. Maybe this needs to be adjusted over. Just one pixel at a time sometimes is the best way to do it. Still, maybe it's too intense. Here, I did kind of want to have it seem like it's further back. But since we're underwater now, this is not like a moon, but this is more of like just some sort of floating underwater light entity. Like one of those deep sea, like, LED sort of uh, jellyfish, the bioluminescent stuff. It says, Goodwill underpays their workers who are physically slash mentally challenged because they wouldn't make more money anyways. Ooh, all right. That's a direct quote, huh? Okay, so we got this visible light. I like this. Maybe we'll adjust the color a little a little bit. Maybe it's more of a... more towards the green. Maybe that's too much. Kind of somewhere in there. And let's just play around with the intensities. Maybe it does need to be brighter. So kind of... I kind of want to have it only really lighting up intensely at the very tip of this protrusion here. Even that is kind of too much. I might just move it over. Let's see if moving it to the right will kind of dampen that. And this is one way you can really like just dial in the overall composition because this is such a focal point that it kind of dictates where these other lines go when you look at them. Like, even though you have this curve down here, when your eye comes up, or at least for me, when I look at this and my eye comes up here, it'll then swing around and go up into this. But if the relationship between sort of like this and this as two points is not correct, then it kind of really adjusts where your eye will go. So maybe this needs to be, let's adjust the Z position, maybe it's too far away. Do that. He saw Mandelbaum Mondays on my screen when I went to lunch. <laughs> Everyone could use a good dose of Mandelbulb, I think. Um, so let's yeah, let's stick with that light right there for now. Let's do a hydration check. Let's take a look. Let's actually zoom out and we'll take a look at this for a second. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so light three. Maybe this one is more of a... saturated bluish pink, sort of purpley. Let's do visible. We'll... oops, we'll do positional. Let's grab the midpoint, and maybe there's something... Maybe it's going to be, this one's going to be off screen, but it'll be up high. So if we adjust the Y position, bring it up here, off, off camera, as it were. And I can just kind of dial in where that light is coming from. Not too much. Now that's a really strong line of purple going all throughout, but it kind of it works with this line down here. And it kind of like bifurcates the whole thing in a way, because when I'm looking at this, my eye comes up here, and it wants to then loop back around, because there's such a strong purple here. But also, when you get to here, this is a really strong focal point still, so it also wants to do that, so I'm kind of getting these two, this sort of Y-shaped deal. Maybe let's mess around with the, the depth a little more. Yeah, maybe it wants to come further that way and not be as intense, because it's kind of giving you this strong line from top through there because it actually has a lot to do with this one little hole right here that's actually like a major element in relation to this line maybe it needs to be slightly less intense here we'll creep up on it it'll be almost a b let's see see so yeah, that doesn't make a huge difference Live labor stream. Shout out to Sess. If you guys don't know Sess, go check him out. Freestyles, beats, all off the top of the dome kind of stuff. It's awesome. Okay, so let's look at... We might come back to three. Let's go to light four. Let's do positional light. Let's change the color. Maybe this one is more of a... more towards the green. Let's do a hydration check. You got it, man. I say good news is I got my new computer to register with my phone, so stream should look a lot better and cooler. Awesome, dude, yeah. stoned here. We're on light four. Okay, so let's do... Okay, we'll do visible. We'll grab the midpoint. And maybe this light... Let's mess around with this area. We're not going to do that. That's, like, way too intense. But also, I like, I like how it's lighting up these pixels over here. Like, there's little holes inside of this thing, and that light is pushing through those pixel holes. It's actually really fucking cool. This one I actually wanted to be more off camera. And oops, that's actually the wrong direction. Kind of want this one to be closer to the camera, but up high towards the left. So we're going to bring it forward a bunch. So we're somewhere in there, and then we're going to bring it up in the Y direction. But you know what? Let's uh, let's save. Let's 
deep M3I. I haven't saved in a minute here. Okay, so Y position. We need to go. Now we're losing it. Okay, so further down. This seems to sort of look just off camera and not quite as intense. This one will be to just kind of do a lot of this top left stuff. Maybe the color is blending a little bit too much with that, that green that's there. Maybe it needs to be closer to the yellow. Let's see what that does. a general area to cover this or general light to cover that whole area see bringing some more highlight to this area which is nice but maybe it's a little bit too intense kind of like that let's do a stretch Oh yeah, the three count the, the counter on the save thing. I just updated that like it was like a week ago. I put the counter in because before that I think it only said save. Okay. Let's do a coffee check. Let's see what we're doing on time. Okay, 13 minutes to do a couple more lights. Go to light five. Turn that light on. Maybe this one will be a global light. What if we do like just something crazy real quick? Now it's getting too much in the other direction. be nice to highlight up just it's giving this v-shape more highlight so now there's there's almost two of these y, y or v-shapes here so you got this shape down here it goes all the way across and then you kind of have this bigger y that goes from down here and it swoops around this this little purple here and it swoops around this way like that more to the red. It's very subtle, but it gives a little bit of more warmth to this whole area. Okay. And we have one light left. Let's do one more positional. wide for a second and see where we want to place it. Maybe we need another focal point up in this area. So I'll do midpoint. I'll put this on visible. Mid 
point, start up here and see where we can go from there. This is one of those big decisions where you're like, all right, that's a major element in the piece that we're adding at the very end. And it could work, or maybe we don't even need it. Maybe it's overkill. Let's see. Or maybe it, it'll work better as just a invisible light, and we'll only use... We'll have the light, but not see the light. Maybe this one also wants to be more towards the red. And yeah, we can use that as a balance. Even though there's nothing here, that this whole shape, I think, is a strong negative space. That's important to think about when you're doing any sort of art, I think, is the negative space. Because it's like, or the spaces between where things are. It's just as important as the positive space, which is what we typically think of as the, like, the object is the positive space. And then the space around it where nothing other than air is, that's the negative space, right? So, like, it is important to think about that. Everything within your, your frame of reference needs to be taken into consideration. So maybe this does want to be more subtle, or maybe it's hmm, kind of somewhere in there. Maybe it's a little more intense, but now it's messing around with the exposition. It drops it out a lot, and that would be maybe too much. Actually, maybe like this, so it's casting a shadow down into this cavity over here. Oh, hang on, getting a, getting a call. Let's save again. Good call. Let's save M3I. This is 1.4. Okay, so turn the intensity down a bunch. Uh, maybe. Nope, so we want to have it be sort of right on this ridge here. Let's do a little bit of these um, hard shadows, but we're going to let's just save this one. Let's override the last one. That's fine. And let's calculate hard shadow on. Yeah, let's do one and six. And okay, what was it? One, two, and six. Let's do that. see where that goes. Nice, okay, so that gave this this nice shadow here. It's hard to tell sometimes, but like, yeah, like this down here, there's a nice hard shadow. Let's actually save this one. 
it's a new version. Now I actually want to see when I can look at the other one and just A, B the two. Do that right here in the preview. I make this preview window bigger though. And I'll just open it up. So we had 1.4. I actually might like the original better. So here's what we have now, and then. actually do like the other one better so we're gonna go very good I like that so we've got these nice hard shadows um, got a couple of minutes let us get okay, in post process hard shadows those are all good ambient shadows are already on I'll just leave that as it is. I think we can call that a finished piece. Let's even maybe just render it out as a... at a higher... resolution. And while that is going, I must use the restroom, y'all. Hey, Tomas. Oh, wait, there's some other stuff going on in chat I missed. Hold Five bucks says it's a Marriott? What do you mean? Double or nothing? Oh, no, no, okay. It was my dentist. I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do, wow, look at this. Let's do a hydration and coffee chip. So 
So this is pretty good. I just want to see if I can clean it up a little bit. So let's go to... How you doing today, Toe? Let's do a shout out for Tomos. And if you all are not familiar with Tomos, he, in addition to being an artist, visual artist, he also does um, uh, Tomos Radio. He'll play SoundCloud stuff and whatnot. And um, he also does the Beat Off with Brightside commentary for us on Thursday nights which is super fun. I'd highly recommend checking it out. And a lot of people don't know, but toe moss is literally a toe with moss on it. And you kind of have to see it to believe it. So go check it out, y'all. Okay, so let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. I'm going to just adjust some of these parameters, like the smooth normals will bring that up a little bit. I'll bring this down to like 0.3. Let's just try that. Getting some logo work done. Hell yeah, man. Let's fucking go. So let's see how well this will clean up some of this noise. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Cool, we're going to go with that. We'll get through this res this um, render at a higher re 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 resolution. And then we're going to save that and we're going to start a brand new bulb. New bulb. You know what? While that's going... Might as well visit the hotbox. there. Here you can kind of see what it looks like before it does any of the shadow calculation. And here's that beak we were talking about before. Beak which is actually part of a larger beak. And there's one of the eyeballs. That could have been another direction we took this in. So it says, yo, I gotta go get started on this digging. Digging, all right. Have fun, man. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you. Love you. Peace out and keep flipping fractals. You got it, brother. We're gonna be here flipping fractals for another hour. <laughs> and then we're gonna do it again next week. But yeah, look at this. This came out nice. So we're gonna save. And this is the final... what we got. That's what it looks like. This will be up on the web store soon. I, I don't want to say it today, but it'll be up soon. And let's jump into a new one. Let's even, uh... Okay, let's actually... What if we just try some different lights on this one? There's some of the default light presets. Like, holy shit, look at that. Okay, oops, we're still in the, the hot box. Okay, so we are here. Hold on, I lost the chat box now. Okay, so... Let's just go back to Mutagen and we'll see what we get here.
this out, and then we're going to go into the navigator and kind of fly around and see where we can take this, and we'll adjust some of the parameters as we go. I'm trying to incorporate a little bit more of um, pop culture stuff into the stream. So I had to go with that GTA 3 ice cream truck, the old Mr. Whoopi, and I'm working on some new Tendril TV scenes that involve some things from other video games that I love from the past. And uh, Tendril TV is coming back. It's not going to be for maybe a couple months, though, I think. I want to really go in and revamp my whole setup now that I've had a couple of months to use it as it was. So I'm going to be making a lot of improvements to the live rig, the Ableton uh, session and all that. I'm trying out some new plugins and whatnot. And plugging in some new stuff. I have a mixer plugged in now so I can plug in more instruments, which will be fun. And yeah, new scenes, new sounds. And I also have a lot of material to sift through from that because I'm working on a record right now. I think it's going to be a full-length album, and I played a bunch of it last week on stream. But, uh, what was I? Yeah, I just need time to go and sift through the material that I recorded during all the Tendril TV sets over the past couple of months, and I need to turn some of those into songs. realize as I'm yapping my flap over here, we're fucking this rendering out at 3840. It doesn't need to be 3840 for right now. Okay, so here we got like a different, like an iteration of that, the last one we did. And this one's more of like, uh, I don't know, it's got these dome structure kind of deals. So let's go to the navigator. I'll grab all that information. And actually, hold on. Start here, yeah. Sometimes they really do just work as um as black and whites. Hey Mario, he said, "Hey mate, just wanted to stop by and say hi. Have a wonderful stream. My internet connection is not good enough to watch any stream today, but I couldn't just let let it you stream without stopping by. Right on, dude. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate you. Are you doing a stream later today?" For those that don't know, Mario, I think we have a Mario chat now. Hey, Reg, are you still here, dude? Awesome. Mario. Yeah, so go check out Mario's page, Ableton Things. Novation Peak. Ableton Push. Composition. Production in Ableton. Good stuff. Okay, so let's look at this, what we got here. I really dig this, too. Let's actually, so let's save this. This is going to be... We can just keep iterating. This is kind of an iteration of the same thing, but we're going to go in and mess with some of the formula parameters. So this will be 1.7. So let's go back into the navigator. And grab the parameter formula and light. And let's look at some of these formulas. We got Venice Pine 2. Is that it? Wow, okay.
Okay, so here you can see, this is interesting. Just by adjusting the scale, we kind of get back to where we were before. That's almost exactly where we were at before. That's really interesting. So let's do this. Let's, um... Let's start keyframing some of these. Because you know what? I, want, I definitely want to make an animation out of, out of one of these from today. So let's maybe, instead of doing another... Instead of focusing on doing a still piece, let's focus on animation. We'll grab like a couple of really good keyframes, and then we'll then we'll focus on the still still version after that. So let's keyframe. Uh, in the navigator, yes, keyframe. Now we'll go to animations. We're going to save. Continue saving on this one. And now we were adjusting the scale. So if we scale out now, it'll move through the spot we were at before and then continue to just kind of do all this. And what we can do is if we just keyframe this now, and maybe we'll just move the camera a little bit or a lot, this could be cool. So as it, it'll interpret, interpolate between the two camera positions as well. Let's keyframe that. And now let's just do a quick animation preview. saved as the other version, then we'll save this as a new version. See, so yeah, here, this is this is where we were at before we started into the animations. Okay, so we got this and this. We'll save this as a different version. This will be 2.1. So now let's do a This will take a minute. Thanks for the shout out. Awesome shapes. I installed Metal Bulber on my Mac. Have to try it out soon. Anyways, see you, man. All right, Mario, thank you. Go do your thing over there. Yeah, everyone, Mario's in um, in Germany. And Retro, I believe, is in Ireland, yes. We have, we have people watching all over the world, which is what's so awesome about Twitch. Like, there's no time zones. Like, I'm doing this show at 2 p.m. my time, but, like, it's, you know, midnight somewhere else or whatever. So there's, you're going to get all different kinds of people. It's interesting. Let's do a hydration hydration check. Yes. This could be really awesome. I do need to generate more visual content for Tendril TV to put into Resolume. of ideas for more uh, scenes and whatnot because I have a green screen now. I need to make my green screen bigger though. I have more fabric I can use but I need to figure out how to like engineer it properly to fit in this room and how to make it uh, applicable to multiple camera positions. Because right now I have it on like a swiveling thing that I've attached to the ceiling. You know, check out this animation. It's going to be fun. Worldwide. Cool 
so here's our animation, or animation preview. This is pretty awesome. Dude, yeah, this is great. Let's keep adding to this animation. This is going to be fun. Okay, so let us go to a blank spot. We're going to go back into the navigator. And we're going to continue just like flying around and we'll change some parameters and stuff. Let's see if we keep going with the scale. Actually, we want to, let's go back the other way now with the scale. All right, we were kind of in this direction. What happens if we keep going that way? Okay, so we get, it gets so small that we're, or so big rather, either way. He's kind of lose it. So back this way was like that. What does X offset do? Is that going to just... Oh, wow. So now what if we keyframe that? Let's actually make sure we're good. We're on a blank spot. Don't want to overwrite um, animation keyframe. And now we have that again here. And we're going to save. I think we'll just do this one as 2.2 because I think I want to use the other, uh, other version of it as is. Unless we can continue and make this put more keyframes in and make it a better, longer animation. Otherwise, we'll just use like a little bit of it. Okay, so let's go back to the navigator. Let's see where we can maybe zoom to. somewhere in there. That's cool. Let's see if we can look around now. Let's change the scale a little bit again. Keyframe that. Now let's do another quick little preview. downscale it a little bit. I love when you get that little bit of an animation. Let's make this go a little bit faster for the preview. Toe says, my green screen setup is four push pins, canvas straps, and a green screen that I roll up to the ceiling and tie off. Yeah, dude, I do the same thing. So like I, I roll it up and I have two of those reusable zip ties that I just zip it across the, the bar I have it installed on and the bar rotates and it's just screwed into my one of my ceiling beams. It's really like super simple. It definitely needs to, uh, an easy way to put the green screen out of the way when you're not using it. It's super vital. I think Five Star was saying his is just also some like green fabric that he used thumbtacks and put up on this wall. Whoa! Check this out. Okay, so this is where animation went. Pretty cool. Let's keep going with it. Go to a blank spot. Do a hydration check. Okay, we'll 
close the animation preview. And let's see. Let's get that coffee check one more time. Okay, let's go back in the navigator now. Let's go. I think this didn't get kind of too messy because we did too much with the scale. Let's see if we can bring it back to. No, we're going to kind of lose it that way. these like fucking red and yellow lines M says mine is like a curtain that I can slide to the side but want to build a PVC frame for taking twitch outside when the weather gets nicer yo good idea so yeah I've never seen this before we have this almost like crosshairs kind of thing going on here If it would, if I animation keyframe that, what happens? Does it like incorporate that into the piece? That's kind of weird. Okay, so let's save the animation. Let's go back and do a still piece because I think that animation is going to be really good. So this will be 2.3. So now I want to open, or actually, let's go into the. Um, so yeah, I think I want to bring back this one. And maybe we'll do some lighting on this one. Like this particular iteration of the um, of the mutagen, and it kind of fits with the the last piece we did because it has the same sort of shapes. And I would maybe you know what since we have this, let's try some more mutagens and see what we get. something that's in this vein and not too noisy and stretched out, but retains a lot of these kind of shapes. Maybe we'll change the strength of these a little bit. Or even this one is kind of cool. Kind of want to see what this one will look like. Let's 
pretty gnarly. I like how it's really rounded. I think I'm going to go with this one. Let's go and change the... Um, grab that, that, that. Yeah, what's the deal with these lines? I don't know. Oh, this is pretty cool. I never even messed with this coordinates thing. You can show where you're at. Oh, is that what that is? I don't know. I didn't click anything. If anybody knows what these lines are, please write in or call into the show. Okay, so let's actually rotate around a little bit here. And maybe we'll zoom. Let's see if we can do this without... Okay, so yeah, we're going to lose it. But wow, look at that. That's pretty fucking cool too. structures. Maybe something like this where there's almost this this thing here in the foreground, but then back here there's like a land bridge that goes across. Maybe we'll try that. Let's actually keyframe that. This will be we'll start with version three. G. Let's try that. Oops. Okay, so Alt actually takes it out of the, the navigator window. And we actually lost that little bit, so let's go here and we can send it back. This is why you save, so now we can take that frame and send it there. the composition slightly. So we're gonna grab that again. And let's see if we can do this without like losing it. Yeah, okay, so I like that. Not quite at the third, but let's um it's actually moving quite a bit for I think this be at one. I did like point two. Then we'll do some lighting. That's perfect. We got right to a half hour with that one. And we even got an animation in there. Okay, so let's do a hydration check again. Okay, 
Okay, so now let's save this M3i. And let's do some lighting. Let's start with the ambient again. Let's do posture check. Bulb! Hey, Dr. G, how you doing? We do need a bulb command. Fuck yeah. That's a good idea. So welcome to the show, Dr. G. We're doing more Mantle Bulbs, as you can see. Mantle Bulb Monday. And we're trying to mess with the... Get the fog just right in here. Let's see about this. Actually, before we do the fog... And the depth, let's do more of this ambient color. Instead of this being that beige, I'm going to go more towards the yellow-green. See, with the far plane being so... I think it's very close on this one, so you don't get as much depth out of the... the depth slider. I do like this green being the sort of the main focus. Go to object, we'll go to specular. Let's start with some randoms and see what we get. And this is sort of the color scheme we went with for the last the last piece. Maybe we want to go with something a little bit different. Wow, look at that, without it, any light on. That's a vibe, too. It's very cartoonish. Not cartoonish, cartoony. Just all silhouette, but not total silhouette. It has a little bit of value, different values to it. And this kind of gives me like a cheese vibe in a way. It's definitely like a sort of like Swiss cheese crossed with Monterey Jack, kind of like it's full of holes, but it has this like this like red shit in it. Okay, let's go to uh, light two. And we'll do this one, and then we'll save again. So let's do visible positional. Grab the midpoint. We'll place the midpoint up here somewhere and see where we can go with that. So I definitely want this to be kind of off camera. Not as intense. Z position. Let's 
Alright, because maybe there's light hitting this, like sunlight hitting this from up here. Actually, it wouldn't really be sunlight. It would be, if it's this intense, it's not going to be sunlight. It would be a more a generalized light. for whatever reason. I don't know why they give you a default brown light. Actually. Just weird though, like, see, this is like... It's yellow, but just darker. So it doesn't really matter, like, if you make it brighter yellow like that. Okay, it does make a big difference, but... It's funny that if you have this as sort of brown, getting a yellow light, because it's a more intense version of that brown. Maybe something like that, just to highlight that upper area, yeah. Close up of the toe moss. Dude, like, okay, ready? Um, if we go in here. Let's, uh, let's save first, but I have an idea. So if we go into this diffuse light, let's pick one of these colors. That would be like moss, right? Maybe it's this do it. Let's unlock with some, what's it called? Unglue these. And yeah. Once you kind of move it past that point of, uh, that's kind of cool too. Because of that, like, neon sort of, like, radioactive vibe. pretty fucking neat. I like that. Maybe it's like... Let's see where we can go with that. Maybe we can do some other sort of weird lighting to this that'll make it kind of fit more. It doesn't fit right now, but we can make it fit, I think. Got a bunch more lights here we can use. So let's go... We'll do more positional. We want to kind of bring it back to a red... Let's grab the midpoint. We'll make it visible so we can see what we're doing. Hit midpoint, and then we're going to click. And even something just like that, because that can be really nice, but maybe we'll just shrink it. And maybe this is a, a sun of some kind. Purple. I don't know if there are actually any purple stars. I should look into that. I know there are no, um, there's no green stars. I can't remember why, but apparently there's no green stars. I just fixed my green screen there. Is that better? It's slightly better. Let me just all crop that real quick. Okay, so. Now I lost the chat box. Show pop out. There we go. Close up of the toe moss. So yeah, so we got this like this sun or moon or whatever here. And I got some coffee. But maybe. Okay, let's leave that for now. I put in another light. We'll kind of adjust them all as we go. Let's do position a little more time. Actually, let's try global. Let's see what we can do with the global light. And if we make it that same kind of more towards the red, magenta-ish. Okay, that starts to bring it together a lot more, I think. Okay, 
Okay, so we don't want to lose that green. Okay. okay, this is important in that... Okay, so we don't want it to be too... too saturated there, but not... Needs to be right in that sweet spot. Maybe it's like one one notch over, two notches over, somewhere about there. And I kind of want to position this a little bit better now. So that's actually is that the one yet? Okay, so It's almost like it's right at the tip of this little rock protrusion. I want to bring it closer then. And like this. Maybe it's more intense. What if it's just like crazy intense? more distant. But the Z point, hold on. Yeah, we want to have it. Now, you know what? I think we'll make it an, an invisible light. But, you know what? I'm not sure. See what we can do with these other ones for now. Go positional on light five. We're gonna go. Let's do visible. Let's set a color. Let's pick a. Maybe this one is more like a muted red. Let's do midpoint and we'll set it over here, maybe. We'll see what we can do with this. Because we've got to try and balance out if we're gonna have this moon sun thing over here that's a that's a really hot spot where your eye your attention is drawn right away i think and then you want to balance that it needs to be based on where the lines are already going in this piece they're kind of swooping up this way we need something else over here to balance out what's going on over there Maybe, yeah, this one is casting a lot of light along this ridge up at the top. Still kind of too intense. I kind of want it to be like that. And in this case, it's kind of actually getting to the right size because I didn't want it to be too big. And again, with this, you have to, like, make a compromise between the size you wanted and the where you want it to be in space. So like if you want to use it as something that's really far away, you have to like either make it small with the Z position or change the intensity. So you have to find a, find a balance between. It doesn't always make like spatial sense. Damn, you think you need food. Yeah, get some food. Oh wait, I'm missing all this great stuff in chat. M says, although you can spot many colors of stars in the night sky, purple and green stars aren't seen because of the way humans perceive visible light. Okay, so are they actually, um, they might be like X-ray stars or something like that. That way you can see with the X-ray telescopes, or they could be infrared, probably not infrared. But. but if we are at the toe, I'd imagine the gaseous atmosphere might affect them differently. Tomas, out of this world and in your sock. <laughs> I think I need food. Oh, food sounds really good. Time's it. Okay, so we got like 15 minutes to finish this piece. I think we're doing good. Let's save again. I'm going to save our M3i. 
it's going to be version 2.2. And we can even go past two hours today, gang. No time limit, but we were doing... I like the, the beat-off idea of this, where it's like you do a piece per hour. I think it's a good challenge. Okay, so let us go to... This is our last light. Uh, maybe we'll do a global light on this one. Let's just see what we can do if we... Maybe just flavor the whole piece. And maybe something like this is happening where there's light coming from over here, and that also kind of, in a way, helps to explain why this object that technically is, like, perceived as being far away is actually casting light there. It's not from that, it's actually from this. It kind of tells a different story. But maybe... I think we want to do positional light instead of global light. That way we can kind of put it in this space here and cast light across a lot of this bottom area. So we got positional. Let's do midpoint. Uh, sit on four. Midpoint. Something down here, yeah. We'll just take it down in intensity a little bit and we'll bring it uh, sort of forward. Yeah, is that the right direction? I can't remember. Yeah. to be like a bunch forward sort of like behind where the cameraman would be if you think of it that way but okay so now we're losing it the other way something like that but way less intense and invisible and different color maybe oops invisible is kind of still wrong. Maybe something like that. Just a really subtle way to lighten up this whole area down here. Let's just A-B it. Let's see. And that does kind of help to balance out of this. There's like a triangle going on here between the, these two points of light and down here because of this line. And that helps to give more weight to this part of the triangle because there's a lot of perpendicular lines to that implied line going on here. So let's go, maybe we'll just adjust this a little bit more. And this is one of those times where you kind of want to squint your eyes and look at it from further away. Because you're trying to get an idea of the overall thing, so squinting kind of just makes it into like the gestalt of the whole thing. Let's save. Let's do a quick hydration check. And I might want to play around with that fog color a little bit. So we, yeah, we used up all of our, our positional light and our global light, all that stuff. go to the fog, or actually this is the depth, not the actual dynamic fog. So actually we didn't do that yet, so let's actually maybe see if we can blend in what we have there in the background with some fog, like actual fog. Kind of like that better, where you kind of get that green to blend
because this this line up here, this like silhouette line is very strong. But I do want to get a little bit more of this green happening up above there too. So let's see if we can... Yeah. And with the biddies. Thank you, Em. And yeah, let's see. So yeah, now we're getting some more of that green going on up here, which is nice. We don't want too much. Hey. Hell yes. And yeah, for those of you who are subs, go get these sample packs that are in the Discord, the subs-only section of Discord, if you haven't got them yet. There's two up there right now. One is the Animo pack, and one is the Electribe pack, which you just heard one of the Electribe sounds. And let's see, I can't remember which one's which here. Stuff like that. That is all available in the subs only Discord right now. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's actually shrink this a second. It's actually pretty good, so let's do... Let's stick with that for right now, and we'll do the shadows. Because that'll bring in a lot more of that uh, the contrast that we lost by putting in some of these brighter lights. So... Um, we go to post-process. We got hard shadows. Let's just see. Yeah, let's try that. One, two, and six. And let's just see where that brings us. Yeah, that's great. It brings back in some of that contrast in these, these pits. this up a little bit for right now and we'll do okay yeah we got these maybe we'll set this on like 0.2 let's see if we can address some of these um whatchamacallit all that noise so like on higher resolution and lower race step and maybe we'll also try the normals smooth normals and I'm lurking again. Okay, I'm... Oops. I tell you what, we're going to go past two hours, but I need to use the restroom again. I'll be right back, y'all. Please enjoy the fire sound.
Hey, Javare. Welcome to the stream, sir. How are you today? We are working on a sort of um, Tomas-inspired piece. Actually, I think, was it M that said this? Look, looking at the, uh, something about Tomas. Our good friend Tomas. So yes, welcome. And here we are, we're at, uh, sort of near the end of this piece, trying to get, work out the lighting. And I think I'm pretty happy with that because we did remove a lot of the noise. One thing I might want to look at is bringing the... You know, let's, let's zoom in here a little bit and just look at this area because I want to see if I can clean up this line. There's something about the way that there's like this little bit of black around the outline of this thing that makes it look kind of weird to me. So I think if we play with the, the fog depth, we can mess with that a little bit. Uh, so, you know what, we do have to zoom out, though. Let's do that, and let's mess with the, the fog. That's actually a lot closer, I think. This kind of feels more blended. black at the very top up here. And one more thing, I might want to make a... Oops. That's fine. Okay, so... Let's actually go to the ambient light. Maybe this color needs to be a little bit more towards the yellow. Okay, that's good. It needs to be that little bit more warm to kind of... It kind of helps tie the whole thing together because there's a lot of this. There's also the complementariness of the green and the yellow, or the, the purple and the yellow. But then this kind of needs to be closer to a warm color to kind of tie it together. I think that works better. Good, you got some nice colors going on there. Thank you. I like this color scheme. It's like... Magenta's really nice, and then we kind of went with this radioactive yellow-green. And that was like... You know what? This has to be... Um, who was it that said in Brightside's chat one night that Tomas was bitten by a radioactive toe, and that's why he became Tomas? I think this one is going to be like... The title of this is Bitten by a Radioactive Toe. So we're going to save this again. And then let's render out a larger version of it. Or a, a more... A larger resolution for print version. Alright, we'll just get one more look at it from far away. I think it works. It has enough... Uh, we brought back enough of the contrast in these little pits by doing the shadows, and that really makes it work better all together, I think. And then there's this. Yeah, I really wish I could rotate these in here. I would love to be able to do a flip horizontal or flip vertical to check for balance, but we'll just, you know, you kind of just have to deal with it at some point. Can't have everything in here. It's a free program, y'all. I like this though. So let's um let's render it out as 4K. Yeah, this one's got some really bold colors in it. A lot of the other ones I've done have tended to do more muted stuff. necessarily more muted, but more, I don't know, this one has like a very black light, like neon, ultraviolet kind of thing going on to it. 
especially with that magenta and the, the green and the orange. Like these are very like highly saturated specific colors. Like there's only a couple colors you really get with like UV pigment. There's like this color yellowish green, which they call green, but it's more towards the yellow, like fucking radioactive yellow. And then there's like the magenta, which kind of a lot of black lights turn everything sort of that color because of their the visibleness of their that part of the spectrum is purple because it's very high frequency. But like, yeah. And then this orange and this red and this sort of like these pink highlights, those are all like the basic UV pigment colors that you can get. Hey, Tomas, I saw that um, on Instagram, I think. I, somewhere I saw that you got some, like, m metallic prints or something like that in. That looks really nice. I'm curious to know where, or who's your printing service, because I've been using, my new shop is set up with Printify and Wix. And Printify does the fulfillment, they do all the printing and everything. I have to say, the, I ordered some samples from them and they got lost in the mail at some point. I think it might have been my post office fault, though. But they, the prints got damaged in the mail. And I was like, oh no, am I not going to use this place anymore? But then they sent me another one that came out perfect, so I'm very happy with it now. Okay, ambient shadows. Come on, let's go. Let's fucking go, shadows. Okay, there we are. And that's it, that's where we're at. Like, we're just gonna export that as an image file. I'm gonna go save pick, and in this case, I'm gonna do JPEG. And this will be 2.5 final. And then I have to go back and export the other one we did as an actual image. Do that in a minute. And yeah, save right there. Oh, you know what? I did the wrong thing. When you want to export, you have to leave it at the res like leave it at one-to-one -one viewing. That one-to-one -one means you'll export it at whatever this value is here. If you have it at one one to two, you'll get half the resolution when you export. I know it shouldn't, that's like just for viewing and it shouldn't do that, but that's how it works. So I fucked up. Let's do it again. Yeah, that. Save. Yes, replace. Okay. So this is bitten by a radioactive toe. And, uh, you know, we've gone past two hours. I, I don't know if I want to do another piece, but... So let's see who, who we can go and raid now. And we'll call it a day, y'all. It's been a fun one. Hey, Drone Hands is back. I haven't seen Drone Hands on in forever. See what Drone Hands is doing. I know we usually do art people in our days, but I haven't seen Drone Hands around in forever. This is amazing. It's been like probably not forever, a couple months, I think. Looks like he's doing some VCV rack stuff, modular patching. Sessions is on doing, uh, it says doing some labor in the Florida, in the Florida heat. <laughs> Looks like he's, uh, building a something or other outside. Oh, Miko Bites is on. Ohm Lab is still on. I would love, I would love to rate Ohm Lab. Let me see if he's going to be on for a little bit. I 
not familiar, Home Lab is a sound designer, musician, extraordinaire. Territory. Take the home command. Thank you, M. Bear with me here, we're gonna see. I don't know if he's seeing the chat. So we're going to raid Ohm, and he's going to raid someone else. So thank you, everyone, for joining in today. Mandible Monday, Episode 6. I love all of you. I appreciate you for being here. Everybody, the lurkers, the people just chilling, doing chat, and whatever. Um, yeah, so I will see you tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to do, I'm not sure what, in Ableton. Something in Ableton. So let's raid Ohm Lab, and we'll go drop some emotes and whatnot. And we're on our way. And here we go. <laughs>